Ah, break time again. Thank God. No more chemistry today. Huh, right or left? Nah, I'm not heading down towards the water. Dr. Mano's been there. Let's go this way today. Ah. Wow, what a beautiful day. Love it. Oh, we've got another artist in the woods. Huh. I what they're drawing. Hey, you mind if I look at your artwork? Come on in. How uh are you? Oh. Hi, Dr. Romano. Fancy meeting you here again. I thought you'd like to be down more by the water. Well, I do, but I decided to write up a question here and to show you what I have. I think you're going to be very, very pleased. Um, it's some really solid chemistry, and let's take a look. I okay. got six questions that are going to be a great help for kids taking the DAT exam. I'm going to show you how to name some aldehydes and ketones. First of all, aldehydes end in the word al. Now, on this first one, all you would do is you would number the longest chain, and as you can see, there's four carbons, so it's butanal. And you can see off of number three, there's a methyl group. Putting it together, we would get three methyl butanal. That's pretty straightforward, and that's pretty much the way we would name an aldehyde. If there was five carbons, it would be a pentanal, six carbons, it would be a hexanal, etc. If you look at number two, we count that there's a total of seven carbons. Therefore, it's a heptanal. Now, notice you don't need a number because the aldehyde group is on the very end. So if this is position one, that means that these chlorines would be at position four. That would give me 4,4-dichloroheptanal. And that's all there is to it. Now, to name a ketone, notice there's two functional groups here, but the aldehyde as well as the ketone group has priority over an alcohol group. So that means the alcohol group is going to be a substituent. So if I number it, such as this, I'm going to come up with 4-hydroxy-2-hexanone. When you do ketones, you need a number, because if the double bond O is here, then it would be a 3-hexanone. So therefore, aldehydes, you don't need a number to locate the carbonyl group. Ketones, you do. So, once again, you would get a 4-hydroxy-2-hexanoin. Now, here's where it becomes a little challenging. What if there's an aldehyde and a ketone group? Who's got the priority? The answer is the aldehyde. The aldehyde gets the priority. Now, you might say, why is that? That's the IUPAC rule. Let the IUPAC boys fight that out, giving you the explanation. But the bottom line is the aldehyde takes the pro preference over a ketone. So if that's number one, that means the ketone group is a substituent, and therefore we use the word oxo. So putting it all together, you can see you would get a 5-oxo, this is being 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 5-oxo hexanal. On the next one, you would do the same thing. The aldehyde gets the priority, but you have two oxo groups. One's on the 3 and one's on the 5, so that's a dioxo. Putting it together, you would get 3,5-dioxohexanal. Now for the big one. There's three functional groups here. An aldehyde, a ketone, and a carboxy acid. No group has a higher priority than a carboxy acid. So this becomes number one. I've actually seen professors screw this type of question up. The aldehyde group is also called oxo in this case because it's just a substituent. So four has an oxo and so does eight. Therefore, we would get four eight dioxo octanoic acid. Oh, and by the way, number three, if you notice at position number four, there's a chiral center. So if you were to buy this molecule, if you were order it from a chemical company, it wouldn't be enough to say, I want 4-hydroxy-2-hexanoin because there's chirality at number 4, so that would mean there would be an R and an S. But that's another lecture when we talk about stereochemistry. But I hope this gives you a good idea 
um, on how to go about doing aldehydes and ketones. All right, that's it for right now. Next time what I'll do is I'll put up a couple of cyclic structures in the next clip on how to do a cyclo compound that's in the aldehyde and ketone. I hope that gives you a good ways to go on this and gives you a good start. Thank you, Dr. Romano. I'm going to go take a break now. I'll work on this later. You do that. Good day to you. Okay. Slave driver, man. Bye-bye.